Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. If you look at these two images right here, you can see the one of the head is a little bit tilted. Nevertheless, the end result is the same. So, I'm going to show you how you can be more efficient and precisely on your brain scans. Stick around and I'll show you. Hello my friends, what's up? So for those who are new, my name is back again. I'm an MRI radiographer in my channel. I'm covering things from basic to advanced MRI topics, tutorials just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. Just like in the intro, I want to show you how you can be more efficient and more precisely on your brain scans today. The reason for that is because if you don't know about Dot Engine, let me show you where you can read more about that. You can go directly into the Siemens page right here, Magneto World. I will put the link in the description down below for you. In here, you will find papers which people are sharing their how I do it and their experience with the Dot Engine and how they can be more efficient, you know, scan more and have more precisely examinations. Just check that whenever you got time. The reason for making this video is because I want to share my experience. When Dot came around, I was like thinking, oh man, more automatically and less for us, for us to do, you know, less for us to optimize and, and things like that. But when the years went through, as you know, I always have an open mind on how I can you know, be working faster, efficient and be more precisely on my brain scans, any scans. And that's when I realized that is actually very important in my daily routine because this will make my work faster. And how is that? It's not because only you can work faster, but it will also be easy for your radiologist to look at the images, compare from one day to another day and different examination. Just imagine if you have a patient with MS plaque and there's small lesions and you know that the patients, when they're lying in the scan, they're not lying correct. Every time, sometimes they had a little bit tilted, like this, like that. So with the dot tension, this will solve the problem. Even though from one scan to another scan, it will find the reference points in the brain. And then it will automatically tilt your head straight back to where it started. So with this, you will be able to have from one day to another day. And you can compare the images directly. It's so much easier for your radiologist. And it's easy for you also because you can work faster. You will save time on NPR uh, reconstructions because everything is automatically. And then you can use your time on different things. You can focus your time on different things uh, rather than sitting there and just do some reconstructions, right? I will try to show you today how you can do this. Without further ado, let's go to the scan and I'll show you. All right, for this demonstration, I'm using a 1.5 Tesla on a software E11e. Doesn't matter, 1.5 to the Tesla, it all works as long as we have Dot Engine available. As you can see here, this is day one, and we're gonna just do a regular brain scanning right here. And we're using a 3D amperage just to demonstrate for you. It's a 3D, right? And here on the other line, we can choose head brain. Now you can choose basis, a IAC, orbits, optical nerves, and so on and so on. The scanner will find the reference points in the brain and then will automatically position for you. But let's do standard brain today. So I'm choosing sagittal right there. And all you gotta do whenever the localizer is finished, you're only gonna do the positioning in the field of view in the sagittal plane, right? Like that. Do not angulate in the coronal or do not angulate in the transversal. It will do this automatically for you. So this will all be easy for you for the next day. Whenever you're doing another scan, it will be correctly uh, each time for comparison. So we are finished with that scan and I'm going to do our standard haste localizer here just to show you that how the tilted the head is. And then in the end, I'm also using an NPR planning. And with this planning, it would automatically do the reconstructions for me whenever the sequence is done. So this is very fast and efficient and uh, makes things more precisely from each time. So what I gotta do is I gotta choose the coverage in coronal plane and in transversal plane. And I will also show you where you can find all these settings for you to be able to do the same here as I'm doing here. So I'm finished with that. 
All I'm gonna do is apply. And whenever I'm done that, it will automatically make MPR planning for me in those two planes, coronal and transversal. So in here, the program card, you can choose between the dark cockpit and the program card right there. So I'm uh, going to the program card is right there. The program card, you cannot do much rather than just drag over and run the sequences. In the dot cockpit, it's more for the people who optimize the sequences and setting up the protocols, right? So in the Siemens tree right here, in the head, you can find a program. So here you have brain.engine program. So the reason for showing you this is there are so many finished assignments right here you can use. If you have a protocol ready, all you gotta do is copy those assignments and then it will automatically do this for you. So you will save time creating your own assignment. Nevertheless, if you want to create your own assignments and planning, it's not difficult at all, I will show you. You have to go into the edit mode, of course. So let's check here. In the default right there, you have something called default add-ins. Here, you have a lot of things, abdomen bolus timing, you have a bowl, care bolus, generic views, and so on and so on and so on. So you just need to drag and drop in whatever you want to use. But in the, the Siemens uh, tree right there, as you can see here, those are finished ones and they're working great. So you can just copy those ones and use them with a little bit modification if you want so. So let's go into MPR planning. With the MPR planning, you uh, go in here, add in configuration, MPR planning. So right here, you have the opportunity to create your plannings. You can create coronal, transverse, oblique, whatever you want. You can choose your, your field of your fixed field of view, 230 here. You can choose the slices and the thickness and the other line. You want it to reconstruct as the brain or the basis and so on and so on. You can have many, many if you want to, because you can only add MPR range. You can rename them and whatever you want. So whenever you finish with the MPR planning, you need to have MPR assignment to that specific sequence. Just like this T2 right there. T2 space, let's go in there. Those are connected. So how, how, how is this 3D space connected to this MPR planning? If you go into the adding configuration right there, uh, before you continue, you have the opportunity to choose uh, images right here. If you want to show the technologist how you want to position, you choose text if you have many text you want to use. You can see here, it's ticked on the coronal transversion. That means that this, uh, this 3D sequence is connected to the MPR, to those two planning you choose. We only have coronal and transversal as you saw, right? If you have something oblique and so on, you only gotta do, finish it in an MPR planning, go back to the 3D, add in, and then you could just tick it on. Then it will be connected. So this is where you will do it. So in here for the 3D, the same as I showed you earlier, you choose isocenter, sagittal, and then you can choose whatever you want here. There are many possibilities. I'm usually using brain. All right, so we are now at day two, different time points, the patient being outside and coming back for another scan. And we're gonna do the same scan here. I'm doing an AA scan first, and we're gonna do the same MPR. But this time, the patient is very tilted. So you can see the orange box right here. That means that you choose a field of view, it's outside the isocenter. So all you gotta do is move it, and then it starts to get yellow, then it's perfect. Then you can scan, right? So remember from the first day one to day two, I didn't choose, I didn't angulate in coronal, I didn't angulate in the transversal. All I did is choosing my final field of view on the sagittal plane because I'm doing it in the sagittal plane. Like that one. And then I'm gonna open MPR planning. I'm gonna choose the slices, which I'm covering the whole brain in two planes. I'm going to check the results pretty soon. Okay, as you can see here, the upper row was day one. And you can see the patient is lying as good as possible with the head straight. You can see it in the transversal plane right there. And day two, uh, the patient is lying very oblique, very tilted to one side. And 
without the dot engine, it would be impossible to angulate yourself in to make it correctly from, from day one to day two. So with the dot engine, it's much easier. So this means in terms that the patient can lie tilted from one day to another day, and even though the end results would be perfect. Let's check the end results. So this is the end results. This is day one. Day two, where the head is very tilted. Okay, let's check the sagittal plane right first. You can see they are so synced and the patient is lying. It seems like the patient is lying perfectly each time, but in real life, it doesn't. You saw that this head was very tilted. So it's making uh, the radiologist's life much easier. Imagine you have a small plaque or many plaque. They want to see if there are new ones or small ones, you can want to compare from one time point to another time point. Well, that's it guys. I hope you find this video valuable. Are you not using Dot Engine today? Please put your mind into it and uh, I will guarantee you that you will be able to work faster, more uh, precisely, and it will make your radiologist's life happier. I'm pretty sure many of you guys had the same thought as me when Dot came around and we were thinking that, oh, it's more automatically AI. What are we going to do now, right? But please take a look at Dot Engine. I'm using this every day. We use, we've been using this for many years and uh, we are very happy with this. Before we close up, I do have a question for you. Are you using the Dot Engine for the brain? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Do not forget to push the like button and hit the subscribe, hit on the notification bell so we get a ding ding whenever new things are coming up. So the summertime is here now. Take care and I see you on my next video. Thank you for watching the far end. Peace out.